Hi, you guys. Welcome. Welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and today I am super excited to be sharing with you guys my makes for the hashtag No Shades of Grey make-along. This is a make-along that is hosted by Hobie Yarn. I did an introduction video, which I will leave in the iCard and in the description box down below. Um, I... Right now, I am being a very horrible um, sponsored content creator. <laughs> um, Hobie did graciously send me this yarn for the make-along. However, I am filming this this morning. This is Friday morning. I did not film a video until today because I really wanted to get one of these projects done. I was making two shawls, and if you are a regular subscriber to my channel, you will know that we got incredibly incredibly sick two and a half weeks ago and we've had some family things going on in the last few days so it's not been a uh, conducive environment to finishing cable projects or lace projects so I made a final last minute push to at least get the knitting project done and I cannot tell you how wonderfully this turned out. I really hope that Hobie will forgive me for getting this uploaded or filmed and uploaded and, and tagged and everything a little bit late, but you guys, it was so worth the wait. I wish this were blocked. I'm going to try to get a snippet of this after I pin this out to block it, just so you guys can see the absolute gorgeousness that is the combination of this pattern with this yarn. But you guys, my first project for the hashtag No Shades of Grey make along is the Knit Provisation Shawl by Stephen West. And this is using the Hobie Winter Solids. No, it's Winter Glow Solids. So this is a single ply roving style yarn. This is a wool and acrylic blend. It is 51% wool, 49% acrylic. The individual balls were 100 grams, 350 meters, 342 yards. I have five colors of them. They're number 33, 22, 11, 2, and 20. And you guys, I, like I said, I have not blocked this, so my, my baby ends are still visible here on the edge. Please forgive me. But we start out with this beautiful standard rope cable. I did, I told y'all in a show and tell that I did kind of mess up my twisted rib stitch there. It's because I yarn under instead of yarning over and I ended up with a open rib, which actually works to my benefit for this. Then we have this gorgeous honeycomb cable. We come back to my open rib stitch, which actually will lay very flat in the, the shawl, so it's fine. We just lose a little texture there. Then we have this gorgeous V-stitch, and then we have a fan pattern here on the final edge. So when I chose these colors, I chose them specifically because they made me think of like a rose garden kind of thing, carnation garden. Um you know, pink, blue, and purple tend to be my wheelhouse, so we did incorporate two out of three of those colors, but I did want to do something a little bit different, and using yellow and green was very different for me, but my thought was, you know, if you look at a field of flowers on a spring day, the sun is shining, you have blue sky, you've got the stems and the clouds and the flower buds and everything all blending together, or maybe you have like a reflection on the water, so you've got like maybe some cresting waves that are a little white on the water. I don't know. That's what my thought was for the color palette. I was a little worried at first that this would not come together in the way I thought it would. I did actually sit down and like I ordered my yarns. I, I set them out on the table in different orders looking at like if I made this the dominant color and kind of would set it forward and kind of spend some time looking at it. I did decide that the central color should be the brightest color for some reason that seemed to read better and I did want to incorporate as much pink as possible. I did not intend for my shirt to match the shawl today. That was just 
purely accidental, but this is a really nice length. I'll try to get a little snippet of what it looks like at a distance, but it is unblocked. And I, I really tried to get this done by Monday, Tuesday, but I just could not do it. My brain would not allow it. I did use a lot of lifelines. Uh, I am not good at tinking back cables. I tend to drop stitches when I tink back cables. So I did use a lot of lifelines in between sections and groups. So I didn't have to restart this. But even, even though this is a single ply yarn, roving style yarn, we still have beautiful definition in the cables, but it's got a nice soft effect. With the yarn, this was wonderful to work with. It was very smooth, very easy to work with. I didn't have any snagging or anything else with this. It was wonderful. And we've had a lot of ooky days. Uh, it's been very wet, as speaking of which, it's actually raining again today, except it's going to be 70 degrees and rainy. Um, we also had days that were like 14 degrees. So, and overcast. Can't get rain when it's cold here. But this was a wonderful interjection of color, texture, and an experience for me. This was perfect for the make-along. I really enjoyed sinking in and working on this. In the days that I was starting to heal from getting better when we were sick, I was able to spend some time, you know, voiceless sitting there working on the cable pattern. But you know, it, it did take brain and I've only had about hour to two hours a day where I can really think. So, you know, all I needed to do was get through this section, but this took me way longer than it should have. This should have been like three days max in my normal knitting time. And this ended up taking me like nine days. So I was running behind and finishing my projects. So once again, I really, really do hope, Hobie forgives me, but this make along was so much fun to participate in. Uh, once again, if you guys are not familiar with what the purpose of the hashtag No Shades of Grey make along is, is starting at the beginning of the make along that is called Blue Monday. It is the quote unquote saddest day of the year. While it is a marketing term, it is a, a well-known psychological phenomena that many people this time of year after the push and excitement and everything of the holidays as the weather is still meh in, North, in the Northern Hemisphere, we tend to suffer from seasonal affective disorder. I have a number of people in my family that struggle with sad this time of year every year. It's a uh, push to hurry up and get to spring when you can go outside, enjoy some sunlight, actually produce a little bit of vitamin D. So this is, uh, it was actually kind of really exciting to be asked to participate in this make along and share Hobie's um, yarns and stuff in the process. I was incredibly grateful that they were willing to send me yarn to make projects with the, to go along with this make along because they have some amazing yarn. Um, so yeah, this, this make along started January 15th, which was Blue Monday this year. Today wraps up the make along. Making sure I said everything I needed to say about the make along because I still have one project to share with you guys and y'all are going to love it. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So in the description box, there will be links to the yarn that I used in this project or in these projects. I did have a substantial amount of the Winter Glow left over. Um, we're a little short on the white and the pink as those did end up getting used a lot, but you've already seen the green. We have a substantial amount of the yellow left and a lot of the blue. So I'm actually thinking about making a cowl out of what's remaining like a bandana style cowl and maybe incorporating some of the cable patterns from this and kind of like have like a mini version of it. I don't know. That might be a little too much for me. Anyway, 
So this was the Knit Provisation Shawl by Stephen West. Definitely recommend. That also ticked off one of my goals. As I said, I'm going to do repeat goals of the um, 2023, the projects I didn't get to. So one of the things that was on that list was finally making another Stephen West pattern. Now I have. It incorporated color and texture, which is why he's one of my favorite Just Yes designers. I, you know, he uses some really odd combinations that personally are not my taste. However, the way he breaks up his patterns, I was worried these weren't going to work together as well as I had originally thought. And then, of course, as soon as I made it, I'm like, this worked out exactly like I hoped it would. The way his brain works in design and formulating design, like as long as your color palette matches or coordinates, you're going to end up with something gorgeous. It's the proportions of the way he does things. It's the combination of the placement for colors as well as textures. I saw some of these that were done in neutral colors that were absolutely stunning. So I'm just saying it, 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 a lot of the success of this project really does come down to the color palette of the yarn. The winter glow selection is huge. That is one of the most extensive blends like that that I have ever seen as far as like the color options. I mean, I had a number of colors of green and yellow to choose between. I had to sit there and like look at the pictures real close. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for that kind of yarn, I'm just saying the Winter Glow is an excellent option as far as like the number of colors you have to choose from. My other project, this one is unfortunately not complete. I am on the last section though. I mean, I came so close. Y'all have, if I had not gotten sick, if I had just not gotten sick, and I mean, I literally lost four complete days being ill and then the road to recovery was very long. This was the, I, I would not, I would not recommend this flu. <laughs> um, it's a, it's a 24 hour flu bug. I, I would not recommend it whatsoever. So this is the summer freshness shawl and look at how amazing this is. So I told you guys, this was pushing the limit. So with the make along, it's no, uh, dark blues, grays, or uh, brown, I think it said. Black. Blue, gray, dark blue, gray, and black. Those were the colors that were excluded. I did ask for this Dulce Cashmere yarn. It came in a cake. And this is 65% virgin superwash wool, 25% polyamide, and 10% cashmere. The ball was 200 grams, 770 meters, 842 yards. Recommended needle size is a 3.4 hook, a 3.5 to 4 millimeter hook. Um, this is a size one. The, the winter glow is a size four yarn. It is on the thinner side of a size four. Working it with a size seven needle is perfect. So this I'm using a size E crochet hook. But the, the reason why I decided to ask for this and kind of push it, because, I mean, that's, it, it's denim colored. It's not even quite as dark as it's, yeah, there you go. That's true to color on my camera. Um, I knew that was pushing the boundaries, but one of the really weird things that happens here in the southeast of the U.S. in the summertime is we get these really hot days and at night right before dusk when it's super clear you get this beautiful gradient in the sky especially where we are you sometimes see this in the mountains a lot too where the reflection on the if you look up in the sky can be really white and then it slowly gets darker as you look down the horizon. And these are these tend to be on very, very hot, clear days down here when it's not too humid. And for some reason, this gradient just screamed that effect. And I was just like, I really want to make something with this. So this is actually a very pale, dusky blue, just like this is a dark, duskier 
denim color. So this is not actually gray. This is blue. But when it's up against this bright pop here of this aqua-ish color, it doesn't read that way. The gradation of color on this cake of yarn is gorgeous. So it's very, very, very slow transition. You really can't tell until you're truly into the blue, like where it starts because it slowly changes color so subtly. I didn't realize I was in the darkest section until I was completely in the darkest section, but I've been working it now for two rows, complete rows. And now I'm on the, the third row here. It, it, this yarn is awesome. This is one I will be repurchasing. I really like working with this yarn. Um, it's very, very light. It drapes incredibly well. It feels luscious. But I still have a couple more shell sections to come down, and then there's a lace pattern at the end. But I love how this worked together. And once again, I wanted that airy feeling because even though it's hot, these tend to be the days that aren't so humid. But I really hope I can get this done maybe in time to wear for Easter as we have a very early Easter this year. We know how good of a luck I have uh, getting my Easter shawls done, though, if you, if you have been around here a couple of springs. But I don't think even finish this will be too big to wear just because the drape of the yarn is so soft. Once this is blocked, I think I'll still be able to wear this as a scarf because this, this yarn is so squishy. It is so squishy and so just... But I'm enjoying the, the lace on this. It does, once again, take thinking. Um, the pattern is very, very well written. There are a couple of moments where you can tell the designer is not... The pattern was originally written in French. Um, I believe it's French because they're mignon crochet. And I would assume mignon is French. Uh, so, yeah. There are a couple of typos that are easy, like you're already working in a set pattern, you know what you're supposed to be doing. So when you come across these typos, they're just where the um, French abbreviation is still in place of the English abbreviation. And it really, it's not been an issue. There's no problem with that. There is an option for making the shawl even larger, expanding parts three, four, and five. And there are three different edge lace borders depending on what your stitch count is when you get down there. So I definitely recommend the pattern. The yarn is phenomenal. And now that I've finished one of these projects and I'm well on my way to finishing the other, I am definitely ready for spring to be sprung because I am ready for that injection of color. I am already to start seeing neons and, you know, maybe if it warms up enough, I can enjoy the pool or at least the pool side instead of going, huh, that was a, uh, Big waste of excitement. <laughs> Since literally our last day in Charlotte, it decided, oh yeah, we're no longer going to be 100 degrees. It's going to be 80 with a low of 50. And by Halloween, it was 30 outside, which never happens. It's been 10 years. I can't say never. It's been over 10 years since that happened. Once again, while I did not use the Hobium Plus patterns or any of the Hobium patterns, they do have amazing pattern selections. I just already in my mind kind of knew what I was looking for. Um, I did, there were a couple patterns I almost chose, but I knew what I wanted and I knew what was going to excite me. And part of the process for this is to be excited by the projects we're working with and be re-energized by them. So I opted to keep with the spirit of the make-along, but you guys, I am very, very thankful for Hobie for sending me the yarn. I pray for their patience and the fact that I uh, 
as a content creator did not follow necessarily the rules directly. Uh, but for good reason. I really wanted to show the finished shawl. I really wanted you guys to be able to see how it was laying. I mean, once again, unblocked. We still have this beautiful drape to it. I'm ecstatic. I, I, I really am. I have been very excited about these projects for a while now. I've shared some pro uh, progress of these as they have been going through and I just... This was a perfect project for me. It came at the perfect time. I wish I had not gotten sick when I did because I would have loved to have had this blocked for you guys to see because I... But come back next Thursday because I will be sharing once again. We'll talk a little bit more about the patterns specifically and hopefully both of these will be finished and blocked in time for next Thursday's show and tell. Until then, you guys, I cannot wait to see you. Thank you, Hobie. Thank you guys for thinking of me to participate in the No Shades of Grey make along. I hope everybody is having a wonderful, fantastic weekend. Thank you for coming on an irregular schedule with me this week. I hope to see you soon. Bye, you guys.